Let me do this. Cool. <clears throat> yes, awesome. So gonna start with a workshop today. Okay, let me see what I have here. Well, I want to say thank you all so much for spending, uh, for taking the time to be here. And it's, it really does mean so much to me. And uh, because to see that there are friends, there are people in the community who really care about this, right? So yes, um, many of us here know me as a friend, but also actually over the past decade, I've had the privilege of working with and studying highly successful individuals like Warren Buffett and Steve Wozniak. Um, in the video here, I'll show a photo together of me with Warren Buffett and uh, we went for like a lunch. And uh, so Warren Buffett, some of us know here, he's like being so-called the most successful uh, investor of our time. And Steve Wozniak, he, if we're using Apple product, he is the co-founder of Apple. And these people who achieved remarkable results in their field, and through my extensive research and study, I've discovered that their ultimate key to success boils down to one crucial factor, which is their ability to concentrate. And I'm thrilled today to be your friendly guide on this transformative journey of unlocking the power of concentration. But before we dive into this workshop, I want to share this quote, which is I'm super passionate about. Ta-da, this one right here. So you can become successful with less discipline than you think. For one simple reason, success is not about doing the right. Success is about doing the right thing, not about doing everything right, right? Because we have 24 hours a day. We have, you know, we go to sleep and go spend quality time with our friends, family, lovers. And uh, when it comes to the time that we are doing work, it's only you know, four, six hours or eight or nine, right? So if we spread ourselves too thin, then that's like a lot of distraction. That will be going to like five different directions at the same time, right? So here, uh, the quote is by Gary Keller. He wrote this book called The One Thing, uh, which I don't know if any of us here have read it before by any chance. You know, if you have read it, you know, feel free to drop it, you know, in the, you know, in the, in the chat bar. I believe we'll have that. So, okay. Maybe no one, I can't really see the chat bar right now. No, okay, nobody. Yeah, it's okay. Well, uh, later we'll come back to this, right? So uh, today the workshop is in five modules here. The first one is understanding concentration and distractions. The second one is cultivating concentration techniques, which is super, super important. I'm super, uh, you know, fascinated about these. Like, there I come together like five concentration techniques for all of us to take home, and then we have applying concentration in daily life. This is one of the parts, and we have breakout session, which is we're gonna share our concentration problem and action plans, and we're gonna you know just share what we have in mind, and there will be balancing concentration and service which is something I'm also super passionate about and uh, but not being talked quite a lot about in the self-development arena, if you will. And then we'll wrap it up with Q&A and conclusion. So we gonna jump right into it. Hope everybody's as excited as I am, you know? Um, so yes, concentration, there are many definitions, right? And you know, let's embark on this journey. So there are many definitions and it's such a crucial element in achieving results and success in any field, whether you are a successful business person, an actress or university student, honing your ability to concentrate can make a significant difference in overcoming challenges and accomplishing your goals. Just like the sun, concentrated rays can ignite objects through the magnifying glass. Conscious concentration empowers you to focus your attention like a powerful force, allow you to tackle difficult problems with precision and achieve even greater success. So the bo uh, my definition of concentration is the ability to focus your mind on a single thought or idea. 
So, which is like not to concentrate on two things or a few things at the same time, but your ability to focus on one thing in that particular time, right? And so I'm gonna just leave that uh, definition there and then I'm gonna jump right into talk about distractions, right? Because we have the black and white so that we can regularly compare. And what about distractions, right? So I wrote down here the distractions and again, you know, this my map will be shared with uh, to everybody in your inbox. So uh, distractions, there are three types, sensations, a new thought roused by sensations, and old memory thoughts provoked by present uh, thoughts. I believe I, chair, I checked with every single one of us here when it comes to meditation. And then a lot of people will share with me that when they're meditating, they usually, you know, they get caught up into some thoughts or some memory in the past. And uh, it's like, um, yeah, you know, again, I, I'm not sure how many people have read this, but in the reading, there's like the story talking about the monkey mind, right? It's like, we try to concentrate on one thing, but there's constantly like, oh, maybe the neighbor is being a little bit loud or maybe the people, uh, the next door, um, you know, they're making like phone call kind of loudly or they're watching TV kind of loudly, right? These are all distractions. But in order for us to really understand concentration and distraction, and I would like to talk about distraction from a biological, psychological, and environmental standpoint. So from biological standpoint, our brains are wired to seek novelty and respond to stimuli in our environment, right? Because come back to thousands or even millions of years ago, when we back in the days, we we're all just uh, wearing like leaves in the cave, right? Our ancestors, they really need to be constantly seeing whether something is moving so they can detect something, if something is threat, gonna kill them or something is gonna be their dinner or something they something or some animal that they can kill, right? Because they gotta be really focused on that. Otherwise, you know, we wouldn't be survived, you know, as human species, we wouldn't survive till today, right? I mean it worked and served us very well, but however in the modern world, you know, everything's everywhere is, is is extremely safe, but that becomes something that could get us easily distracted. And distraction from a psychological standpoint is that our attention is a limited resource. It's like when you're playing a video game, you have this energy bar on top of this character, right? And the essentially the more things, the more decisions you make, or the more you jump in between tasks, actually, you know, the easier it is for you to be distracted. So also another, you know, um, since you know, this is a workshop, allow me to get a little bit nerdy. Who here have heard of or read the book called Eat the Frog by Brian Tracy? Anybody? No, nobody. So yeah, I think this is like quite old school. Um, as So yeah, he's he was essentially saying that um, Eat the Frog, it's, uh, he used the frog as um, if you have a very important and big task you need to do, which is like this This has to call eating the frog, right? Because nobody wants to eat a frog. But he was saying that if your job is to eat a frog, then eat the frog first thing in the morning. When you are still very focused, when you can, you know, really sit down and uh, without distraction, without checking the email, without, you know, replying a lot of uh, text messages and whatnot, right? Rather than delaying or avoiding it, you know? So distraction from the environmental standpoint, Actually working, uh, go for a walk or being in nature really helped a lot, right? Um, at least this is personally for me, right? I found it easier when I'm like go to a park or when I live in nature, right? So who here goes to the park, beach or hiking daily? I know some of you guys are, you know, try to or spend a decent amount of time. Um, so I can guarantee that we feel different after we spend some time in nature. We just feel like more calm, more in tuned, and more relaxed, right? And there's um, science behind this. A study published in the Journal of Environmental Psychology found that individuals who took a walk in nature 
showed improved concentration and performance on cognitive tasks compared to those who walked in an urban environment. And it, speaking from experience, it seems like plants at home also helps, right? And uh, this is something um, I think, at least for me, that you so personally, I'm quite, personally, I was quite guilty about this, right? It's called clutter is the enemy. So a clutter or disorganized environment can contribute to mental clutter and dis and it's essentially, if your table is super messy, it's easier for you to be distracted, right? Uh, or even your room as well, where you work. So, and again, Journal of Neuroscience suggests visual clutter competes for attention and can also impair the brain's ability to process information effectively. And lastly, co-working space. This is actually me, where me and Tony met. Uh, I have this example here that, let me try to, let me share this one. It's a different screen here. This one right here. So this is um, this is a co-working office, very beautiful, and it has a lot of, a lot of light. This is one of a uh, co-working office called WeWork in America, right? And you can see a lot of light. And versus this one, this is actually a co-working office I have been in here in Malaga. Um, you can see, right? Just it just seems just a little, little, little bit more depressing. And unfortunately, right. And also study shows that if you go to an environment that has a lot of light and it's actually much easier for you to stay focused, much easier for you to concentrate. And versus you know, an environment like this, um, it's we become like much less productive. So that's that for the module one. We talked about distraction a lot we talk about concentration and it is definition so you know and then we're going to move to the module two which is cultivating concentration techniques and um, there are five of them and i would like for all of us to pay attention to these and also like drop here in the chat bar i believe there is one maybe isa you could you know like drop a message in the chat bar so that people know uh or see it Thank you. And, uh, you know, feel free to drop like, okay, I use number one or I practice number one sometimes, you know, like you can just write the number, it's fine. So number one is mindful breathing. Uh, this is something I learned from Tony Robbins, um, life coach, world re renowned speaker. And also practice from Kundalini Yoga as well, right? Which is using whether a fast paced breathing or slow paced breathing to focusing on your breath. And in this way it helps you uh, to make it easier for you to concentrate. So, you know, I don't like to be just a one person talking, right? Uh, let's do a little, just a little bit of practice, you know, just, just for the sake of it, right? So um, it's gonna be fun. So all we gotta do is just go like this and we're gonna be bre uh, breathing from our nose, right? So it's okay, you're at home, nobody's watching, you know? So, so all you gotta do is just like breathe like this. Yeah, you push, pu push it down like here, yeah, exactly. And breathe it from your nose. Rockley, there you go. Keep going a little more. And now just relax and breathe very, very slowly from your nose too. There you go, there you go, there you go. It's okay if you feel like the energy is pretty intense inside of your body or in your brain, or even you see something like flashing, but you know, it's normal because uh, essentially what we did, we just pump a lot of oxygen uh, inside our body, inside our system. And uh, no joke, this is actually exactly what Tony Robbins, he did for the last, I don't know, 20, 30 years. He did it every single time before he get on stage. And I do that too. Um, like still all kind of breathing exercise every time before I get on uh, to do some kind of public speaking. So Tony is going to be, this is going to be great for you, for you when you speak in uh, Madrid in July for the, for the keynotes. 
right? So uh, yeah, cheers. The second one is called Pomodoro technique. I believe that maybe if you are someone into personal development or if you're into um, maybe even business management, we have heard about this, right? Very, very simple. Long story short, set a timer for 25 minutes and fully immerse yourself in one task. Then take five minute break and repeat the cycle several times, which is you do, I personally do between from 20 to 30 minutes. So I do like, let's say 30 minutes, five minutes break, 30 minutes again, five minutes break, and then maybe another 25 minutes in the end, and then I take a little bit longer, longer break. Usually this combined to earlier, we talk about eat a frog, which is if you pick like the most difficult task, or if you're an entrepreneur, right, pick the task that's directly related with lead generations or, you know, uh, marketing or some activity that bring you revenue. You do that for one and a half hour in the morning, like and you do use this uh, Promodoro technique and it really, you get, you realize you get so much done in one and a half hour in the morning, you know, and, and when I do this, I don't check my phone in the morning. So I just get up to my morning routine and I jump right into it. So I maintain focus and boost productivity and essentially you're chunking things by time. And number three is chunking technique. This is more chunking uh, by tasks, right? So for example, I post a lot of videos. So I work with videos a lot. And when I'm editing a video, I'll break down into a few different tasks. So a video needs uh, like subtitles, right? So subtitles is gonna be part of it. Maybe I take, 30 minutes to do the subtitles. And then there'll be some images or videos I want to use or make. Then I'd spend like 20, 30 minutes to do the uh, uh, the video, right? And in the end, there's gonna be music. So then I'll take a little break and then come back again to finish up the audio, right? And then maybe I'll take another break and then to write a caption and post it. So uh, this is a technique by the notorious Elon Musk. Uh, he used it because especially for people who are working on complex, complex tasks or projects, you know, it's easier uh, to break into smaller parts so that you can just tackle that project one part a day. For example, if you're writing a book, if you are recording an album, if you are, I don't know, do whatever you're doing to toward the fulfillment of your dreams, right? Uh, then... Wayne Dyer, uh, visualization is daydreaming with a purpose. I really like this guy. He had a lot of great books. And uh, he talks a lot about use the power of visualization to enhance concentration as well. I believe Mike Phillips, he's an American uh, Olympic gold medalist. He won all, get, all gold medal in Beijing in 2008. And he used a lot of, of this technique, which is um visualizing themselves executing their sports with precision and really you you imagine things as vividly as possible as detailed as possible and uh, if more of us are interested in it, we can have like a different separate chat or separate workshop about visualization but just something very very powerful which is visualization and last but not least my favorite uh <laughs> meditation so Ram Dass, he said, the quieter you become, the more you can hear. And uh, this is something that I've been thinking a lot about, which is, um, he said this, Ram Dass said, the spiritual journey is individual, highly personal. It can't be organized or regulated. It isn't true that everyone should follow one path, listening to your own truth. And I believe of... I genuinely think that being an entrepreneur, an artist, uh, will find your passion is the same. There's no like one standard that everybody should be like this, you know, because we joke about it in America back in the past, right? If Steve Jobs or all these entrepreneurs, they drop out of college, should you also quit your college? Or, you know, like just quit your job and start your own dream company? Maybe yes, or maybe not, right? But the, the answer is that it depends on the person, right? So come comes down to mindfulness um actually their study shows that just by practicing like five to ten minutes mindfulness meditation every day and we actually rewire our brain so our brain actually works differently than in the past before that we have done meditation so yeah this you know this is just something like it's super super powerful 
and uh, it really also takes a lot of discipline just to like be there at in the morning or in the evening every day to sit there and meditate. So, and that's why I love it so much, right? Because it really helps me to be disciplined just by using a few minutes a day, but also at the same time, it really improves your ability to focus. So um, these are the five techniques. Um, does anybody have like some comment on these right now, you know, and uh, do you practice any of these like, you know, on a daily basis? If you know, um, you can let me know. So I, I knew the first one. Uh, okay. The... Tony Robbins, the one that we did like this. Yeah. I saw that because my cousin is a big fan. He goes okay. to all the events and, and everything. And he teaches me that that technique. But in my day to day, as you know, I work in a co working space. So yeah. I have to go to the bathroom to do this. <laughs> yeah, man. Or just also, do, it, uh, do it before you go in. You know, you outside the door, you do, you do it like that. You come in, you know. Yeah. And also. Um, Tell me. I I would like to know how to keep my audience uh, concentrated, how to make them not lose. But maybe this is for another day or uh, more techniques to keep the the audience super mm. focused and concentrated. As as you know that I pitch, no, and I'm yeah. gonna do that event and everything. So yeah. now I'm a lot focused on this, and yeah, also yeah, this yeah. is very interesting for me because I multitask a lot. So it's kind of yeah. important what you're pitching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll keep in mind, you know, we can have a separate chat about this and then, um, or, or, you know, if I have some time to do it in, in the end of the call, you know, we can definitely address that. Um, but yeah, cool. it's, it's exactly right. It's, um, but it, what's your question also kind of connect with what we talk about this first part, right? Because it's, yes, even sometimes with the audience or your prospect, they're interested in what you're talking about. It's not, it, it just, but maybe because we're so used to being distracted, right? So it's just so super easy for people to just get distracted. Even they're super interested in what you're talking about. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, yes, great question. Um, thank you, Tony, I appreciate that. Anybody else want to share anything? Um, okay, cool. Let's move on because I know uh, Arena have like, uh, six or ten like amazing questions waiting for us these are super amazing so yeah <clears throat> so applying concentration in daily life concentration and productivity share a very close interconnected relationship and supported by scientific research and study right so I think when it comes to productivity, which is, that's what we all want, right? We want to get the most out of our time when we actually sit down and work on something. The least thing we want is to like spend hours on one task or a few tasks, but we, but we feel like we didn't like make huge progress. And the, if your question is that or similar to that, like how do I get the most of my day to be more productive and be better at concentrating, the answer is one word. It's called a concept called flow. So maybe I'm gonna check everybody now. Like, so we all have heard of or something similar of to the concept flow, right? Have we, or you, you can nod, you can shake your head, you know? Okay, cool. You need 10 minutes, let's get over this part and then we can, we'll, we'll just, uh, We'll restart the uh, the chat. Uh, so, yes. So the concept called flow, which is the definition of flow, it's um here is a little bit more in detail. But essentially, the flow is mean where challenge meets skill. It's like say um, it's conducted by this psycho uh, psychologist. His name is Mihai Chikson Mihai. You know, probably pronounce it super badly, but um, he also wrote a book about this. It's flow is characterized by complete absorption and focused concentration on a challenging task where time seems to fly by. And during this state, you are fully engaged at a task at hand and you are highly motivated and you are just like, it's like uh, in the movie or TV show, maybe some of us have seen, it's like the limitless, 
in the in the in the movie that the guy who takes a pill and then he just becomes super smart, he kind of sees everything. It's like that, and um, it's like the perfect amount of difficulty meets your skill, right? It's like when you're surfing, or it's like when you're selling something, or it's like you're doing some kind of painting, or you feel playing the guitar, or writing a song, or something along that line, where you're designing something and then you're just absolutely killing it that day. So, and uh, me and my mentor talk a lot about this. His name is Joseph. He told me that actually one can set a goal to live in flow as much as possible. He told me that he been uh, set that as goal since 2017. And now he pretty much live his majority part of, of his day why he's being in flow, right? So I want to say that, you know, being highly productive is extremely impossible, right? All we, all we have to do is just like practice and find your favorite techniques to concentrate and also to design your life and design especially your work life to, um, you know, to have the perfect amount of, let's say perfect amount of time to work and perfect amount of task that you know it challenges you perfectly it's actually extremely possible why because you know my mentor very close to me he told me that he did one two three four five and then now he's essentially living in flow all the time he's very very productive so um multitasking here um i yeah exactly like tony mentioned the multitask right so um i think Nowadays, I mean, I think we are because of the technology, because of the environment, it's easier for us to do multitasking, right? But uh, the author of the one thing he called this, I remember so clearly, I read this book like eight years ago. Uh, in the book, he said, uh, multitasking is like messing up two things or more, more, more things at once, right? Because it's like uh, when you're jogging between tasks, right? Um, the study actually shows that when you are juggling between tasks, especially the complex ones, right? At least to decrease efficiency and increase errors. And I can speak from uh, experience because for example, I work with a lot of freelancers, right? And I realize, you know, some of the freelancers, they're audio engineers, they are video editors. And I realized that, um, and also their study shows that too, right? Like if they're working between very complex tasks, and for example, they have like more than just one client. And when they're jogging and personally in a, me in the past as well, when I'm jogging between two clients, a study shows that actually 20% of your work day actually goes into finishing where you picked up last and finding more information about your next client essentially, right? And uh, this is something to keep in mind, right? I mean, if you're, but also back to the thing, right? Me and Tony, uh, we talked about this Again, if you are a startup, if you're an entrepreneur, you pretty much like have no choice but to do, uh, to wear more than one hat, right? But again, you know, that's why we're here, right? Even so the workshop of this purpose, you know, it's like for us to understand more about concentration and some techniques so that even if you have to do multitasking, there are ways for you to do it in the most uh, essentially efficient uh, as efficient as possible, right? Which is, um, for example, now I try to do, let's say, uh, because I, again, I record videos, right? So, and I do video in English and a video in Chinese, and they are totally different kind of videos. But now I would do like, let's say on Monday, I would do English related videos when it comes to, you know, uh, concentration, when it comes to technology. And then I'll do a completely day on Tuesday, I'll do Chinese videos, which is really with culture and really with uh, like, let's say life in Spain, right? I mean, this way I'm still multitasking, but I have like essentially a whole night to refresh, to, you know, kind of leave what I worked on today, you know, put it into bed. Okay, I'm gonna revisit, you know, this in like 24 hours so that I'm multitasking, but also at the same time, I'm kind of not. So, um. Cool. We are we're running a time of this session now, and I promise you know it's it's only gonna be one hour. It won't you know um I I'll do my best to not run over time, right? So, you know if we want you know let's take a screenshot of this right here, which is to share um and then we'll like kind of I will log out of the Zoom and we can rejoin.
which is now we have the opportunity, if you will, it's not mandatory, you know, uh, to share one and two concentration problem you have. And uh, from what we talk about today, if you have some kind of action plans to overcome that concentration problem. And uh, so, you know, if you would like to answer or participate in this workshop, feel free to take a screenshot. I'm going to, how to say, uh, leave this, like end this call right now, but we, we're gonna rejoin right back with the same link. Okay, everybody, we're almost there. So nice, awesome. Thank you, everybody. Cool, cool, cool. We're gonna join right back, okay? Yeah, ciao, ciao.